Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the things that I learned from this incredible little book here, Steal Like an Artist by Austin Cleon, 10 Things Nobody Told You About Being Creative. This little 140 odd page book is honestly a gold mine of advice, awakening, truth for anyone that does any work in a creative field. This particular copy of the book was actually a gift to me from my good friend Neil Kelso, who is an incredible creator, performer, writer, um, kind of jack of all trades. So big shout out to Neil. I have read this book probably around 20 times since he gifted it to me on my 25th birthday. Steal Like an Artist covers a lot of interesting ground in its 140 pages, but I've pulled together the five points that resonated with me the most to share with all of you. Let's get into them. So point number one in this book is that nothing is original. It's it starts with this amazing and honest truth that nothing is original, that everything is sort of a remix of the things that have come before us. It kind of says that everything original has already been created and that the truth to being creative and being an artist is not to think of something truly, truly unique, but to take ideas from other places, steal them creatively and pull them together to make your own thing. I love this as a concept because as a creative, I really struggle to come up with ideas that are truly original. And sometimes when I take influence from other places, I feel Feel a little bit bad. But Austin Cleon says that rather than that, you can think of it like we are all the sum of all of our influences. And that the real way to create this sort of original, artistic or, or creative work is to start off by copying. Reverse engineer other people's work. Take the things that you love from artists that you love and take it apart. Work out what it is that makes that unique and original. What do you like about it? But do it from multiple sources. The more sources you have, the more original your work will ultimately be. As human beings, we learn everything by copying. We learn how to write by copying down the alphabet repeatedly. Musicians learn how to play instruments by copying scales and arpeggios. Even the Beatles started out as a cover band playing the songs of the artists they like most. This book tells you to start by copying your heroes and when you fall short of the work that they create, you will make up the difference with your own skills, your own abilities and your own creative voice. This is the secret to stealing like an artist. Point number two is to just get started. I absolutely love this advice to just get started. If you have a thing you want to do, just do something about it. Take the first step, take the leap. You'll never know who you are or what you can do until you start. Ultimately, if you don't start now, you'll just be sitting here in the exact same place you were a year from now. So the sooner you get going, the faster you will get to being that creative person in that creative place and creating original work. I made an entire video on why you should just get started, which I still think is one of my better videos to date. I'll leave a link for it here so you can check it out. Point number three is to start a hobby. This point resonates with me because I love learning new skills. I love learning random things, but most of my hobbies, I end up sort of incorporating into my uh, my work life. Cleon uses a phrase here, which I absolutely love. He calls it productive procrastination, which is sort of procrastination, but with a purpose. He says that it's super important for us to have side projects, to have hobbies, to have things that we do to, to play with our work. And if you have two or three passions, do them all. Don't pigeonhole yourself to one thing, to one creative endeavor. Don't feel like you have to throw any of yourself away. Again, a piece of advice that truly resonated with me because I'm definitely going through a period in my life where I have a few things I enjoy doing, but I don't know which one to pursue. Rereading this book really gave me the permission to do all of them, to not worry about it that much, and to keep learning and doing new things and doing these things like, like making videos, for example, for no particular purpose other than the fact that I enjoy making them. Point number four is to do things and then share them. This applies especially if you're still trying to find your feet as an artist or a creator in any way, shape or form. Because while you're starting out and you're still relatively unknown, there's no pressure. There's no sort of thing that people are, are expecting of you. It means you can change things up. It means you can try new things. It means you can uh, change your direction halfway through a project. Keep doing stuff. Keep trying stuff until you do something that you think is quite good. And then really importantly, share it. Don't keep it to yourself. Put it out there. In the age of the internet, stick it up online. It can't hurt. If you're trying to get people to care about the stuff that you create, the stuff that you make, you have to put it out there for people to see. If it's not out there, if it's not available for people to see, no one's going to care because no one's going to ever have seen it. With the internet, there is really no excuse for this. Find a community, find people that like the things that you like, add value, share stuff with them. And if you're thinking to yourself that you don't necessarily have something to say on the internet, here's a great quote that I love from the book. Cleon says, you don't put yourself online only because you have something to say. 
you can also put yourself online to find something to say. Basically what he's saying is just by putting yourself out there, you might even find the thing that you want to do. You might find the person that you want to be, the creative niche that you've been looking for. The more you put yourself out there, the more that will come back to you. I absolutely promise. And last but not least, my fifth favorite point from this book is simply to be nice. Make as many friends as you can and simply ignore your enemies. There's this amazing piece of psychology that I used to love to quote to high school kids when I worked with them really closely, that you are the average of the people that you surround yourself in. There are a whole bunch of studies have been done into this, that you are the average of the people that you surround yourself with, which is basically means that if you surround yourself with like-minded people that are good at the things that they do, then you will be that like-minded person that is good at the thing that you do. If you surround yourself with lazy, negative, boring people, you will become lazy, negative, and boring. Find your people. Find the people that make you inspired or make you want to do better or push you to do better. Once again, if you haven't read this book, I would highly recommend it. It's such a lovely little, uh, little piece for your coffee table or your bookshelf. If you're an artist, a musician, a magician, a, a performer, a creator of anything artistic, then this book is an absolute must read in my opinion. If you like this kind of thing, then do consider hitting the big red subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. I'll leave you with another quote from the book where Cleon says that validation is just for parking. Don't wait around to hear what other people think. Just get on with it, go out there and create good stuff. As always, stay awesome and I will see you in the next one.